and welcome to this very exciting supplemental Tem Talk. Today we're being joined by the World Cup 5.5 million Pansun tournament champion, and I, I will say the king, I think, of, of competitive PvP, Subaki, is joining us to sit down for an hour here and uh, do a little extra mini episode. And Gaijin and Kennedy are with us as well, but right off the top, guest first, Subaki, how are you doing today? Thanks for joining us. Hello, thanks for inviting me. I'm doing really fine. Hope it's the same for every viewer. <laughs> Kennedy, Gaijin, boo, how are you guys? <laughs> doing well, doing well. Having a, having a good day. I want my darn red bird. I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad. You mean that, like that Luma 2i that's right behind me on screen there? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> held that Luma 2i for a second. I had one of the Infinity Gems. But, uh, but for those who don't know, I think anyone that listens to this or has found this will know, but last Sunday, Josh Stryker hosted a 5.5 million Pansun reward tournament called the World Cup, and Subaki, who joined us here, was the champion. He You walked away with 2 million Pansuns, and ever since the immediately we started this show, people have been wanting us to have competitive professional players on um, in an interview with them and, and get their take on it, and, and it kind of see into that mindset and uh you i think having just won this tournament i think before this tournament i would have i personally would have picked you as one of the strongest competitive players and i think it's been it's been solidified now i think you're humble and you'll probably deny everything i'm about to say but but that's what we're very excited to have you on for that reason today thanks a lot i mean that's a lot of honor to hear to hear <laughs> uh yeah i mean did quite a a few tournaments now since the start of the game but let's say the last one the incredible tournament made by Josh Stryker, uh, it was an amazing one because it was the first double elimination experience too, actually. And I personally really enjoyed it. Um, I can understand some people not liking it because when you st lose at, directly at the start, you have like so many matches to do <laughs> to go back to a possible uh, winner bracket again. Uh, but if you like manage to do a nice streak at the start, it feels really good. Um, I think most of the big names were there, so I had some really complicated matches, uh, especially against Kini and against Dave Goblino for sure. He, he kicked my ass at the first semifinal. <laughs> I had to think a lot about uh, replaying the match in my head to how can I deal with it, which strategy would be cool. Uh, but yeah, it was a really amazing experience and was really, really happy to win it. You played. You played an incredible. You talked about having to play through a bunch of matches if you got eliminated once, and that's a hundred percent what happened to you. I pulled up the bracket here. Um, all the, for the people that are listening to audio only, you fought through all the winner bracket, right up until I don't know exactly what this is officially. It was, it was round five. It was like near the semifinals to go into the grand finals, and then you faced Dave. Um, and how do you say Dave's last name? The second part of his name. Dave Coplino. It, so you fit, and he two zeroed you. So not only did he, he, he in a, it was best of three, and he knocked you down to the losers bracket. And yeah, you had to fight your way through the entire losers bracket, which. Uh, well, actually, no. Oh, no, you that, didn't. You, you got you got knocked down pretty early. Actually, it doesn't look like you had to go through the whole losers bracket. No, because I was knocked out at the final. I mean, at the first final of the winner bracket. So I directly was in the final loser bracket. I had to wait to the people to go there. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, it was here on Crane. I was thinking that I got knocked to the loser's bracket and, and tried to fight his way back out of it, but didn't. Yeah. wasn't able to get out of it at the very end there by Keeney. Keeney knocked him Look out, who Alder. then uh, you went on to fight later. Take a look at Alver. He was kicked pretty soon of the game. Yeah, oh, Alver yeah. and loser's and bracket he, had oh. a amazing run. Yeah, you're right. Look yeah. at this. He, had to, he played a lot of matches. I mean, you had to play a lot of matches, too. You guys both just did so many matches. Yeah, I mean, actually, yeah, so many bio trees. I mean, that's yeah. Well, not the yeah. The the grand final was was because you were coming into the losers bracket from the losers bracket to fight Dave. You had you beat him two of two o, and then you had to restart the series and beat him two o again. So it was four matches back to back. But you you did sweep those after he had uh, had went two o against you before that. And that's that's my first official question right away. I'm gonna put, take the bracket down here. But that's my first hold question. On, hold on, wait a second, wait a second. You got a bracket there. question? We, you, yeah, we talked about this um, when <laughs> leading up to this. Yeah. And we said the first question we needed to ask Subaki was, how relieved were you, Subaki, that you didn't have to fight Kennedy? 
in the uh, in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oof, uh, I was so relieved, man. You can't imagine. I mean, I'm just kidding with you. Well, Go ahead, Bronwyn. I, I also participated in this tournament, and I, I got immediately knocked to the losers bracket, and I fought my way through it for a little bit. So I'm sure you were equally re relieved that I got eliminated, mm -hmm. and you didn't have to fight me as well. I'm sure. Sure, sure. So, bitch, big at, Sorry. <laughs> at the start of the tournament, when when Josh Stryker asked me to comment on it, I. Like said at the very early, I was like, okay, if anybody asks me who, like, gambling is against Tim Tim's TOU, but if anybody asks me who I would put money on, I would say it's Subaki to win this tournament. But Dave Goblino is always a force of Tim Tim that gets underestimated. And Dave is like one of like the most solid players that no one ever expects like the amazing things that dave consistently brings to the tournament and then it came down to subaki versus dave goblino and then dave knocked subaki to the losers bracket and i was like i don't know what this tournament is going to be i don't know how it's going to end but i'm sticking with my initial assessment and then uh you did like super well subaki like watching your matches so i just want to say like kudos man it's like great so much fun to watch and commentate well, that Thanks. was That's really appreciate it. My question was as, that I, I briefly played in the tournament, and I did only four matches. But for me, as a very amateur competitive player, the stress and and focus and mental fatigue from playing multiple matches seriously, um, I just got outplayed the first match. My second two matches, I played really, I tried really hard and played really hard. But by the fourth match, I was so mentally fatigued that I made a bunch of mistakes and lost. And someone at your level, you can't afford to do that. So just that was my first question: is do you do you struggle with that at all? Obviously not. You must have a strategy for overcoming it. But what's what's that like playing so many serious competitive matches, trying hard over and over? I mean, this was like a this tournament went on for like eight hours that you had to be in this mindset. How did you how did you manage that? So um, I think I started competitive a long time ago. Now uh, I'm thirty, so did had some quite funny other games uh and like it's i think i'm just a competitive person i really enjoy playing against other people i really enjoy winning uh but so whenever i'm in a tournament you i just don't feel the fatigue till i'm at the end whenever i lose like my brain is going for 100 percent or 110 to like 20 reserve battery but um since if i'm not knocked out I want the win, so I'm. I don't know. I'm just always focused, and I'm really hungry for that. And um, and I think the bunch of I did like more than thirty tournaments already in Tem Tem. And if we do like the other games, yeah, it helps just having this habit to stay con uh, focused a lot. Yeah, I mean, you certainly have a lot of experience playing these competitive matches, so it's not it's nothing new for you. So I, I suppose like anything, practice makes perfect is part of the answer. It sounds like true. Um, well, you, you, if you do just your first tournament, of course, like after a couple of match, you will be clearly more exhausted than if you had already played ten of those. So, so guys, and I don't know if me and me and Kenny have both thrown a mess a, a question out. So, I'll, I'll, if if you're on the spot, if you have anything, let me know. Otherwise, we'll we'll keep chugging along. But anything you want to ask right off the top? Um, not really. I mean, so I've just, I've never really played competitive, but I like to watch Subaki's channel when he's streaming because uh, Subaki's super helpful. Yeah. Um, in regards to um, streaming and playing comp, and I just it's not about the tournament. And I know the questions have been about the tournament, Subaki. But how how do you while you're playing? Is it easy for you um, when streaming to explain what you're doing and the mindset you have to people asking questions while you're streaming competitive and uh, trying to help people at the same time learn competitive? Do you feel like it's uh, difficult for you to think about what you're doing and put it into words? Or is it pretty easy for you? So th that's really a good question because <laughs> I myself didn't want to stream actually because I thought I wouldn't be um, good enough to do it because when I'm like in a match I'm super focused if I'm vocal with a mate I will most of the time not even hear him uh, but people in the community when I, I'm like always with plus two and people in his community just asking me why I don't stream you should try and I say okay yeah why not uh, and I try it and actually I had hard time the two first streams but after that 
I'm not saying I can't play that 100% of my level for sure, but I can still be able to make really good reads, competitive matches, and talk with the chat at the same time. I just won't read so many steps ahead that I would in a tournament. Uh, but yeah, actually, and how more I do it, how better it feels. So I'm really happy about that. And what makes me happy is to have like people that share this passion on the stream and that come to have like informations, TVs, the new people that making new teams. I'm so hyped about that. Um, I mean, it's it's always cool to be able to help other people get in there. And it's like this community is so lovely. They always appreciative of it. So I really enjoy it. Awesome. Yeah, I, I kind of figured it would be difficult to play at 100% of your level while also trying to help people understand what you're doing because trying to think about your own steps and put them into words because when you're in a competitive match by yourself and you're not talking to anybody it's probably a lot easier to like think what you're doing rather it just kind of happens on autopilot versus when you're streaming trying to tell people what you're doing uh it makes you think about your own actions more than you normally probably would um and that's probably part of the reason why it's hard for you to see as many steps ahead. But I wonder, the more you do it, if it will actually get easier and uh, you'll be able to play at like 95% of your normal capacity or or whatnot. But yeah, streaming, streaming, I figured it would take a little bit out of you in comparison to just playing by yourself. So it's, it's kind of kind of neat to, to see that it, uh, you know, does affect you in, in some some way. Yeah, you really read me well there. I mean, but I think you're right because it's like a, a muscle memory. How more you do it, how more you take the habits to think and talk about it at the same time. Uh, so I really hope that in a couple of weeks or, or one or two months, uh, I will be able to do it like at 90, 100%. That would be amazing. That's awesome. I think it is a muscle memory. I think, I mean, so much of the competitive is muscle memory. Um <laughs> Of a natural instincts. when toxic plume is up <laughs> <laughs> subaki i don't i don't know how much i think you're you said you're pretty open on stream about tvs and you make specific tv spreads for your team and you don't have to go into tv spreads but just in general to the to the to the level you're comfortable with do you want to kind of discuss the team that you ran and and why you ran it and how you felt it did if changes i mean just in general um, I mean, at the very least, I think it, I think it's safe to say what eight times you ran, if you maybe because anyone could have seen those from the matches. So for those that didn't catch the tournament, do you maybe want to give people a rundown? Sure. I mean, I always show my TVs on stream when people ask them, so I'm really comfortable with that. So I played uh, a team that I thought really versatile. It's actually the same team that I won the um, fellow tamers tournament, except I did one swap. So I played Midrid there, and now I play Raze. Because at the FT, you can change your temps like you wish, the traits, the TVs. Like, I have a couple of them in the box from for each competitive temp -tem that I use. Sure. So that was actually really cool for the Midrid, because you have, like, surprises, the physical one with tenderness, or storm bolt, or, uh, um, like, with Muchuk perfect jab. It's actually really synergized. But yeah, on the Josh, where you can change nothing, Raze is way more consistent, so I really like it him. I know people play Raze as a DPS, some of them at least, but I really play him like full tank. He's there to switch, to take a hit, go again, switch, demoralize, demoralize. Uh, except, of course, if you're facing something that is weak against fire, but otherwise, yeah. I played Metruk, because Metruk, I think, is 100% of the competitive teams. Yeah. He's just one of the best supports in my opinion there is in the game actually uh his ability to just lower the defense for everything is amazing the urshiel is, um, is just actually way too strong uh turbo choreography op and then you have the choice if you play i mean i would always play uppercut i just don't play urshiel with that team because i only play volerant my only toxic <laughs> gaijin yeah gaijin what's going on with you I found a Luma 2i. You just got a Luma 2i, right? Oh, <laughs> oh congratulations, <laughs> man. It was on uh, it was on my giveaway account though, so we're uh, oh, we're gonna hey, give away no, a Luma right, 2i. I'm right here in front of you. You should give it to you're me. You're so honest. No one saw that. You could have claimed it was on your main. I guess people would have saw the OT. No way, because it has my Gaijin 2 OT on it when I catch it, so <laughs> but amazing. Congrats. Save me when hey. you're alive. Subaki, you're a good luck charm. 
Kennedy, you just need to get your two right? on now. I'm happy for him, man. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> guys. <laughs> Congrats on the Luma 2 eye. Alright, let's Congrats. try to catch it now. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You'll have to let us know how it goes. Um, so, yeah. For so, where I was with Mushuk. Yeah, sorry, Subaki. Well, you were talking about Mushuk. And I, I got to say two things and I'll let you keep going. One, I like that how you show off your TV spreads because it seems like there's other players that are so sensitive about not sharing that. And I like that you're like very casual and open about it and yet still winning all these tournaments. So I think it's a, I, th I laugh a little bit tongue in cheek at people that are like, Oh, I don't want to share my TV spread. It's all a big secret. I'm like, listen, Subaki is taking all these tournaments by storm and has no secrets. So, so when people like on my stream will like be like, Oh, are you going to tell us your TV stream? I'm like, yeah, obviously I'm going to show my, I'm not hiding anything. So I like that you're open about that. And, uh, you're talking about Mushuk. How, I think Mushuk was on like every serious player's team. I think I saw Mushuk's everywhere in the tournament. I don't think anyone played with Yeah, I named Mushuk MVP of the tournament because I feel like every match we watched had a Mushuk in it, and every match the Mushuk was doing serious work. Did you catch it, Gaijin? Not yet. Not okay. yet. All right. All right. All right. So, stupid pick -a -pick. While he finishes <laughs> catching that, um, Subox, what, what, uh, after Mushuk, I don't know, I don't know what you have left in your team, but if, if you can try to pick up your trail of thought here. <laughs> Sure, so thanks for what you say first. And Machuk is like, yeah, he's so, so polyvalent. Like I said, perfect jab is just awesome. Uppercut for the damage after it. Turbo, those are like the three fixed moves. In my opinion, I have like two other choice for the force. Well, okay, three with cage, but meh. Uh, you have Urshul, that is OP in my opinion, but like a lot of people ban Valorant at the moment, so if you don't have another Toxic, you just have no Synergize with it. So I prefer mm. to run Tenderness. Because uh, Tenderness actually did quite a lot of job in the tournament. Putting like Gallus yeah, as minus 3 or Valorant at minus 3, and then they just do nothing and you just don't care about them. You got it, Gaijin! Grats! <laughs> <laughs> did 6 and 7 green stats. Oh, wow. Nice. wow. Is it female? It is female, yeah. Wow. It is female. Excellent. Even better. <laughs> Congrats. Well, Thanks, yeah, guys. Subaki, <laughs> you're going to have to come on all the time now to, so we can catch more Lumas when you're around. I would like to, to catch one myself, to be honest, but if I can share some luck, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get it, Subaki. Maybe, you'll maybe, get it. Hopefully, you'll be up next. Hopefully, you'll be up next. So, do you have, do you have a specific example of one a time that uh, of a clutch tenderness play? Uh, let's start, let's back Ooh, up a second. Can I point out? Can for, I point out one for people that don't know what tenderness does? Can you break down that move maybe if, if some people aren't familiar first? So tenderness is like uh, three stamina costs to reduce the attack of the enemy that you choose. And with metric speed, that is actually 99. You're quicker than all the Volarans and even the metric if you have the speed tie. Or uh, Gallus, when he heat up turn one, you're not quicker, but he just do heat up. So you like pet him at only plus one instead of plus two. And actually that change quite a lot if you don't want to get one shot at. Um, but I think the biggest clutch is Valorant. Because you always start against him. And once you do it two or three times, Valorant is just useless. So, yeah, yeah, and I, I think that that was super interesting technology i guess you introduced to the tim tim scene because because i don't think anybody thinks about tenderness and one of the main bands on my team is volaren because i run a mostly special attack team and i think to myself if it's an anaerobic volaren and most of my team is special attackers and they handle my physical threat then i can't deal with the volaren and it kills my team so I always ban Volarin on the thought of if it's an anaerobic Volarin, I can't afford to let it get through. But I didn't even think about tenderness in that Roar is not the only thing that lowers attack in that, yeah, it's three stamina. It's like one of the first moves that Tim Tim learns. But getting that, that attack down on Tim's that either A, can't raise their attack, or um, B, are, you know super dependent upon having high attack for, you know, their survivability. Because Gyalis kills its threats that come out against it. But, you know, if it's not rolling in ludicrous amounts of attack, it can't, you know, threaten to one-shot a Tim, which means the Gyalis has to get off of, of the field. And yeah. for me, like, thinking on it's just like, oh my gosh, I gotta start running tenderness on my mush up. 
So, yeah. Because I'm in the same boat where it's like I run out of the big four. I run Kinu, Gyalis, and Volarin. And most of the time, my Gyalis or my Volarin get banned and the first set of bands so it's like most of the time i don't have any rushial synergy on my team for my mushuk yeah yeah i mean but to be fair i'm not the first one using it i think i'm the second one from at least what i saw but uh mr causation if uh, my uh, memory as well uh was the first one using it at the plus tourney if i remember well um so yeah just to be Completely fair. Uh, I already saw it once when I used it. it is... So I have a oh, I have ahead. a question. When we're talking about your team, there are two Tims that I think stick out the most to me, which would be the Gyalis and Valash. Um, and there's so many different ways that you can run Gyalis and Valash on uh, teams of, you know, some people running an ultra quick, ultra hard hitting Gyalis, or some people running a bulky Gyalis, as, as uh, the scene used to call it, the Atacar Gyalis. My two questions would be, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming you have 500 HP on your Gyalis. Where sure. are the other TVs at on your Gyalis? And then for your Valash, if you chose to max out HP or um, special attack. Okay, so from Avalash, you were right. I have 497 HP. Uh, he's nearly full attack too. He just has like the four in stamina for being able to heat up uh, Sharp's up crystal bite. And a little bit in speed, because I want to outspeed like the other Galluses in case of the mirror, even if it nearly happened, nearly never happens anymore, because I always ban him now. Um, but yeah, I have some speed investment just to be quicker than those because it makes like all the difference to just being able to move before him. He will be dead before he sharp stops you. So that's cool. And for the Valash, so I run it the full special attack because um, there are like two options or you put him full bulky and then you have only like 300 special attack with some speed invested too. Um, but you have to double crystal spike to kill then. I don't run sweat ban on him, so I prefer to have the max special attack because then one crystal pike and one crystal dust kills, and you save a lot of stamina on the long term. Okay, that's very interesting. I I chose with mine to give it uh, 500 HP because uh, personally on my team I'm a little bit more dependent upon my Valash living and just making sure it has that extra bit of wiggle room to work around some moves makes me like more comfortable as a player but i do i do feel that on my tv investment of not going the 500 special attack and that just like man i wish that hit would have killed or i wish that hit would have mm -hmm. killed <clears throat> um fortunately for me i can scam vonlin out of uh Valash eggs and he tv trained his <laughs> true, 500 did. special attack and then he traded it back to me and gave you money so, somehow. I, don't <laughs> I, got got, now. I don't know how i got talked into that deal but i had to get that clinch egg move <laughs> i'm kidding by the way this is a good uh subaki i i have a I can't stand getting um, competitive times that don't have the full egg move, but do you, do you think Clinch will see play on Valash ever? Because that's, that's what we're talking about, is I traded the Valash to get one with Clinch. Do you think there's any point to that? Is it even worth it? Uh, it is maybe when we will see attack Valash, uh, if he gets one day heat up or anything like that. Right. But, uh, otherwise, um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, oh, so it's just a collector's over. point for my OCD then, huh? Um, do, Agreed. Not to, if you have more thoughts on the tournament, by all means, um, we can definitely share them. But I, I want to ask you, well, let, before I want to talk about just the current meta in general. But maybe before we get there, I mean, do you any other thoughts or, or moments from the tournament that we really that you really want to share or mention? Or maybe these other two want to ask about? Uh, I can do like both. I mean, there was one thing like that really uh, made me uncomfortable. I mean, when I <laughs> faced the day for the first time, he, I mean, the first match was okay, was still a hard fight, but the second match, he just stomped me because <laughs> I had the problem that I had absolutely no opening good against him. 
so I always face it like, I mean, I already was like a little bit behind, like 60-40 for him on the momentum. Um, but I thought when I lost against him and waiting the others in the loser bracket, I was thinking like, if I, he always banned my galleys. He knows galleys was sweat banned uh, and he did way too much. So he banned it. And then I was like, if I pick Valash Kinu, start set up him. Even if I have to make a double swap turn one, uh, if I make a hard read later, I will take the momentum back. So I tried that, and actually that made the whole difference. Because mm. once I did that, and I take the opportunity whenever his Kinu was on the field to bring my Valash back, because nothing can one-shot him uh, with another Kinu. He's already plus two, plus two, madness bluff, plus two, plus four. He's already like a horror to kill. So, and I did that for all the matches actually against him, and it worked really, really good because he didn't have an, a big answer for Valash, or he couldn't bring Kinu. Because whenever Kinu was on the field, I just bring the Valash back. So, um, yeah, actually that did the whole difference, and I was really happy about that. Played the match a lot in my head after the the first final against him to find that answer. So, sure. Yeah. So that was the key to turn it around after he took the first two matches off you, then, huh? Yeah, that was the only key I had against him, to be honest, because he was really playing extremely well. <laughs> I, um, I have I have a question about something you did in one of the matches. I'm pretty sure this was against Dave, um, or it might have been against Keeney, but I'm 90% sure it was against Dave. So it was in pick and ban phase, and you were on, you were on blue side, and uh, I'm pretty sure Dave had gold side counter pick. For the for his last pick, and you're picking your last two Tims um, on Dave's side of the field for his final counter pick, he had the option between Tuvine and uh, Ukama, and you had the option to bring Mushuk or Rise. Um, and I felt like your strategy all tournament long was relying really heavily on your Valash which you had picked in your opener of that game. Um, going into that final round, Mushuk does, I feel like Mushuk does not care about Tuvine because Tuvine's a physical attacker and Mushuk kicks the pants off of Ukama. But Tuvine kicks the pants off of Valash, which is your win condition. Whereas Rise loses to Ukama and does okay against Tuvine. And you decided instead of going with the Rye, or instead of going with the Mushuk, that was a great answer to both, you went with the Rise, who was a good answer to one, which pushed the other player not to pick Tuvine, which would have countered your Valash, and pick Ukama to answer the Rise. Was that your thought process, or was that like, was there something else that was going on there? Because I saw that. And I was like, Mushuk's the answer here, but I feel like if he picks Mushuk, he loses. So <laughs> that's actually a good read. Uh, I pick it a uh, race to force him to pick the Ukama. I didn't want to have the, um, the two vine, even if Valash deals with it, that Valash takes a huge chunk of damage of it. If I manage both the Ukama is like lesser problem. I had Whiplump if my memory is well. Uh, I had things to take care of it but the two vine was annoying um so i really wanted him to force him actually to pick ukama instead of two vine. i don't i don't know how so everybody says blue side has a hard side has a hard time of winning because gold side has counter pick and i don't know how you engineered that situation i noticed it when it happened but i was like how did subaki chan on blue side get counter pick against that like because like i felt like that play really was you counterpicking him with the rise and forcing that out. Um, yeah. Do you have any, like, I don't insight into, like, how to play through pick and ban to set up those situations? It may be a difficult question on the spot. I mean, that's actually a really fair question, because let's be honest, blue side still has a big disadvantage. Being able to, like, just take one pick and see what he picks to pick your counter pick, it's like... That's a huge advantage. But like you said, when you're blue at the last pick, uh, you can make him forced to take something, if that's according your game plan, if I can say so. Uh, 
but blue has still a big disadvantage. You can't do nothing for the first, I mean, the first two picks when he only has one. So you need like a team actually that is versatile with who you can open a lot of openers that could maybe have the best situation against the enemy you're playing so that he doesn't have like a big counter pick on your face and you directly lose momentum turn one because that's actually the biggest problem you could have in a rank. Um, so, so yeah, the only advice I could have is have a team with a lot of openers. Don't just count on like Matruk Valorant and you have like none other openers that is available. Oh yeah, of course, Gialis Kino because everyone plays it. But like, that's why I like the people playing actually 2 by 2 But let's say my comp. I had openers with Gialis Kino, Matruk Valorant. Matruk Raze is definitely good too because you directly lower the two speeds and Ember goes after perfect job. Uh, and uh, I could go with Valash Kino too, or even Valash Gallus if there is not so much threats against me to double, just double setup. Uh, so yeah, my only advice is make a team that has a lot of openers that can deal with a lot of situations, so you won't have that much of a handicap on the blue side. That's that's a really good advice. I think I need to do that myself more because I get I can get banned into really awkward openers that where I don't have that momentum turn one. One of the openers you had that maybe is commonplace, but I didn't I didn't really appreciate it until I saw you do it, was you opened with, and, and, and correct me, I believe this was your match. If it's not, don't uh, correct me, but you opened with both Valash and Gaelis, and you yeah. madness buffed and heated up on the first turn. And I was like, wow, that's an aggressive opener. Like one of these two could die, but I don't know, is the thought process that he can only deal with one of those and the other one's going to get buffed up and be able to run away with the game? And I think Valash ended up surviving and, and, and did a lot of work later that match. So uh, I did it for one, two reasons. One, he banned my Kinu. So I don't, it's like way harder to just make a setup. Uh, and sure. two, he doesn't have fire temps. So. Sure. Um, I pick it instantly, those two. <laughs> Hence, the thing is, like, that's a, what you call a rock, paper, scissor. In my opinion, yeah. this game isn't a rock, paper, scissor, even if a lot of people say it. But there sure. are, of course, some situations where it is. So normally, the best play would have been to put Valash back into Mechuk, because Mechuk would have tanked the two attacks, because Valash is 100% dead if I manage buff there, and he doubles in it. Right. But right. Gallus isn't. So... It's so obvious that I can't do it, actually, because if Dave reads it, because he's a really, really good player, too, and my best mate in-game, so I, I know how he works. Yeah. Uh, if he reads that, then I'm fucked. Then I, I, I <laughs> take damage on Gallus and just have a hit-up for one turn, because then he will die the next, the next turn. Right. So I did it on both, because I was like, if he reads that, I'm in a bad situation. If he kills my Valash and my Gallus, sweat band, is hit-up, full life, I'm fine with it. So that's yeah. why I did the double aggressive because in each case it w it was a better result than just switching. Yeah, that's right. You had the guy a sweat band instead of sweat band being on Valash. That was that was interesting. That was really cool to see. Because Gallus is so let's say Valash is more OP in endgame, hundred percent. Once your setup, if both have the same setup, I mean, but Gallus is way more resistant than Valash, sure. is. so you can open way more with it. And uh, still survive, because <laughs> like like I said, I didn't play Valorant once in the whole tournament. It was always banned, except against Dave. So my I always started with Gallus Kinu, and that just just those two made like half of their team minimum dead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um. Gallus Kinu is a force to reckon with. Putting. Putting sweat ban on Valash. This is something I want to uh, cover in Tim Talk, Von Lin. I want to do an items episode of what items to put where and why. I Gaelis struggles with stamina, and I never, you know, obviously sweat ban is the answer for stamina. I never thought about putting sweat ban on Gaelis because it still has so many stamina issues, and it gets banned out so much. Um, what was your thought process, Subaki, on putting the sweat ban on your guy, Alice, um, knowing that it, there was high chances of the guy, Alice, getting banned? And I, I do have a question, too. What item was your uh, Volarin running? 
Okay, so uh, my thought process started at the uh, fellow tournaments, Tamer, and the rank it a little bit before, because like I saw 80% of the time my Valorant being banned, because everyone's starting again to make like a big wind meta, or some people even the toxic meta, so like Valorant is the biggest threat for them, um, if it's anaerobic. So I was like, okay, let, let's do it uh, in another way. I put a snare on my Valorant, because if he's oh, on there and gets attacked, so he will lose his item and i put it the sweat ban on galleys and like i thought 80 percent of the time my volarant was banned and then i can just first pick galleys banning their fire their biggest fire or even if he has two fires i just still pick it and because <laughs> uh, i did it in tournament against kini i think were awesome matches by the way uh he like did double fire i instantly still pick it galleys kinu because I don't care, it's double fire, I will double swap, <laughs> deal with those fires, and whenever the fires are not on the field, bring my Gallus back, back and, and set them up. him. Yeah. And I was like, plus four, plus four, plus two attack, and <laughs> with sweat band staying all the time, and hitting, hitting, killing. It's just so bullshit, actually, with uh, with sweat band, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> and so, okay, it did like that. I never used it sweat band again the whole week, uh, till the World Cup then. Oh, really? And then I did it again on the World Cup. <laughs> with Gallus, and again, Valorant was banned actually in every game except against Dave. Okay, <laughs> okay, I mean, sure, I mean, <laughs> let my Gallus do his job. And uh, even in the stream after that, that was funny actually when I faced it, uh, Dave. And they were like, oh, one that bans his shits, uh, Gallus, or <laughs> things like that, because like he ran it on the game. So, yeah, that was my troll process, just people banning way too much Valorant compared to Gallus, and it paid quite a lot yeah and i don't feel like you had a problem at all dealing with literally any anaerobic volarin like that tim has taken over the meta so much that people are starting to have like the tenderness the good swap ins for rise and rykan to get you know the roars off um an opportunity and you know always running a toxic on the back line especially must shut the swap into like a noxious bomb um so it's like Volaren is one of those ones that I think is a huge threat, such an amazing Tim. But there's a Tim can only be so good before the community finds a way to deal, deal with, with it. it. I feel yeah. like Gaelis had that problem for a little while in the meta of like everybody's like Gaelis is OP, Gaelis is OP, and Gaelis is a very strong Tim. But it's like when a Gaelis comes out, you know exactly what it's going to do, it's going to heat up. It's gonna hide out, and then it's gonna sharp stabs, and you know, just start going ham on like your back or on you know whatever's left after those couple moves. Let's um and let's oh go ahead. I was say let's. I was just gonna say, Gaijin, I got your two eye pulled up here. Your I, I can put Turk this trade down unless you, you guys want any comments on before I we I let you release you from the trade screen. <laughs> uh, me comments or other people because it's. A it's a limit to why on my alt account, so it's a it's a giveaway. So you're gonna you're gonna um, give this away on Sunday, maybe you said. Yeah, I think Sunday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, you heard it here. Guy. Being Gaijin Boo's stream on Sunday to get the Luma two Y. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm coming for it. <laughs> um, um, go for it. But uh, I, I actually got a jet, guys. Um, I got some okay. other other appointments today that I got to deal with. So sure, uh, sure. We'll catch well, you thanks all for later. dropping in Super with Baki. us. It was amazing to talk to you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us and uh, everybody in chat. Love you. My you pleasure, man. Care. Have a good day. <laughs> you as well, Subaki. Peace so, out, guys. See you guys and have a good one. <laughs> so I was gonna um, I was gonna say moving away from the uh, the tournament i wanted to hit at least three more bu main bullet points here so just in general uh subak i want to get your take on the current meta um you know whatever your thoughts are you know I, I posed the question maybe what do you like what don't you like but really take this question in any direction you want to just overall the current state of thames here when we have one month left before kisua drops what's your what's your thoughts and your feelings on it and you're gonna see me so, disappear off camera for a second but just keep on going i'll be right back sure um let's say everyone says fantastic four i think it's actually more like fantastic six like with uh metric and whiplump 
actually Piggy Pig got a little bit disappeared at the moment because there's lesser synergy. But the meta is still really fixed. There are Thames that are way above the others. Uh, we talk about Gyalis, but in my opinion, he's like the biggest OP monster at the moment. Uh, if you just bring Kinu once or two, he's like godly. Um, Which one's the biggest monster? Gyalis, in my opinion. Oh, Gyalis, okay. Yeah. percent His base stats are actually way too high. So if you pair it with Kinu, he's, yeah, way, he's broken. And yeah, I... I actually end up running Gyalis as a tank on my team to swap into Crystal Hits and uh, Hido and just buy like a little room with uh, sleeping. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, even without a heat up, it's scary how great Gyalis is for handling like the role of a support because of, you know, those really high base stats when it gets a little bit of HP and defense. Yeah, I 100% feel you. And so, yeah, I think Kizawa will bring some answers against that. I'm specifically, like, uh, hoping for Babawa's evolution, because, like, will he be, like, Earth's melee, and then he will be the new Gyalis? Um, so that could be actually really cool. I'm hyped for a lot of them there, but let's stay at our meta at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, I think Gyalis is way above the rest. Velash... Valash is actually harder to play, in my opinion, than Gallus, because it's way uh, more delicate to handle. It's like can, you have to. Can I? I got a question. Do, do you think? Did we just say Baba? You think is gonna have another evolution? No. No, Baba is gonna be the next guy, Alice. Oh, okay. No, Sorry, Baboom. that's what you meant. I said Baba. No, Baboon evolution. I said. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The Baboon. Uh, you talk, um, about Smashy and oh, and and Baboon or however you say his name, Big Bomb. I don't yeah. Know Okay, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. So, in my opinion, Baboon Evolution uh, will be Earth's melee, so he will, like, tank everything from Gallus and just wreck him. He has a heat up, too. Um, with the stats he will maybe have with his third evolution, yeah, I'm really hyped for that one. A lot of people are thinking that these, these starters are going to have two evolutions, two types. I know um, Gaijin yeah. feels the same way. You think so, too? You think they're all going to have, they're going to be dual types in their final form? I think so, too. Like, if I would have to think to say what I think, it would be Baboon Evolution will be Earth and Melee. Yep. Witchic Evolution, uh, third evolution will be uh, Water and Mental. Right, yep. And uh, Cheryl, it's like a bit harder. I don't know if Crystal Nature or Crystal uh, Electric. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a yeah, you definitely can see the water on the Hoot Chick. The Shell Draw, yeah, I don't yeah. know, that's a good question. It's hard, it's hard to not say Shira, uh, Shiraud will be a water uh crystal on its final evolution because the crystal i think it's off ability is amphibian whenever it gets hit with the water move it speeds up and i think the only other tim in the game that has that's uh what's what's that tim um that? Cypat. yeah Cypat. Um, uh i have a so i have a question on talking about the current meta a lot of people really dislike the win meta and um, a lot of people just a lot of people disliked, you know, Gyalis being OP or uh, originally before people found out like how to work around it. A lot of people disliked Volarin when Volarin was just like the king of the game for like the first uh, the first like month that people were doing competitive matches, um, even before we had the rank ladder. Mm -hmm. So I have a question on the current win meta. Do you like it? Is it fun to play in? So, uh, in my opinion, it is not fun to play it. It's like <laughs> Whiplum Grandpa, Pigapic, Volarant, Two Vines. <laughs> okay, let's take actually Dave's comp. Uh, that is actually the best copy of it. I mean, not copy, but best element. So he had Whiplum, uh, Two Vine, Volarant, Grandpa. Uh, and um, Ukama, Gyalis, Kinu. I forgot one. <laughs> so he has like every turbo setup. And turbo, in my opinion, with the current strengths of the wind temps, is too strong. Uh, Hypnos isn't a problem because a lot of people don't like Hypnos. I feel that. But like if you put it again on one prio, it will be useless again. But if you have like a situation where you could put turbo, I don't know, with one one speed for both if you have the synergy maybe or like 
I don't know. It's really hard to like put a good balance to it and not nerf it too much. But the turbo at the moment is too strong. It gives you the free synergy with Whiplump quite easily. Uh, the grandpa is already so quick, but with one turbo, pff, you would speed everything with Hypnosis. Even this, <laughs> you're quicker than a Valorant plus four. If you have plus two on grandpa, I mean. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I mean. Do you turbo think turbo? Just, do you think turbo needs to be changed? Or do you think it'll be yeah. less powerful once the win meta is not so prevalent and it's so easy to synergize? I mean, yeah, the problem is really actually. Because if we have like electric Thames that has good moves, uh, that would change a lot of things. Because the people are complaining about it now. And now I understand because now the wind is just way too strong at the moment. And it's like always being hypnosis and freeze isn't funny at all, but it's a strategy. So I have nothing against it, but it's not funny. That's a sure thing. Um, if we have like no electric temps that balance it and can just one shot it, so even if they turbo, if they dead, like pfft, what's the point? I mean, that would change a lot. It's just for now that I'm saying it's too strong. With right. of course like okay. Prima answers that actually a lot to the players. Even if I I don't like how they say it, it's like I have a friend Indy, the leader of Divine earlier. He uh, talked with Yao. And um, he asked it if they could do something about the balance, because as a competitive player, he explained it why and why on each them, Gallus and everything that was needed. And the answer Jan had is like, if you're not happy, I mean, we will do nothing because uh, it will be auto balance with the temps. And if you're not happy, yeah. you can leave and come back later. Mm. Yeah, mm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really sad. I mean, yeah. they, they make. Things, but that part is really not a strong part of them. The communication. Agreed. Uh, we... But I, I mean, I understand. Wait, just last point. I really understand what Crema means about we will not balance it because everything will be balanced with the outcomes, except maybe some little uh, settings, uh, just in case something is a little bit too strong. But mm -hmm. so I understand that because, like, when electric temps will be there, the wind meta will be way lesser relevant. It's right. the same with the earth temps and coming. The crystals will take a hit. Uh, yeah, it will be definitely auto balance with the time. It's just for the competitive players being now here at the moment. It's not that cool i mean i can understand it i have like no problem because i just adapt myself and i love the game too much to just quit it uh, and wait till something comes back but i understand the competitive players that like made the break waiting for kizawa hoping that there will be changes with it I, but we will still have the same problem in Kizawa, in my opinion, until we don't have like every type. In the I know, game. I know, we got limited time with you, and I want to, I want to ask at least two more <laughs> general areas with you. So this is, Stig had threw out a good user question that kind of transitions to my next segue. So that's the current meta. Um, I want to ask you, uh, Stig's question is: Is Nessa any chance to see be semi competitive in the? I would, I would modify to say in the future. Do you think? And in general, in the future. What would you like to see out of the uh, Temtem meta and competitive scene? And I'm talking Kisawa, but beyond Kisawa, just in general, long term for the game and as a direction that you'd like to see it go um, with club wars and just and, and in any way you want to take that. Maybe after after what do you, what your thoughts are on Nestle in the future, and then just look into the future. What are your thoughts and hopes and concerns? Okay, so uh, first the Nestle then. I think at the moment it just doesn't have really a spot, but maybe with the new electric moves, and he has really a cool trade for that, I don't know, it would be like an original move from Tesla that hits everyone with electric, but better than chain lightning. Sure. Uh, or even if he takes like big, if he receives uh, big moves, he could maybe have a spot when it's an electric meta, because you can just switch it and he will just heal from it. If you read the if you read the attack, true, true. Uh, but his base stats are quite the problem. So that's maybe he will receive a little up that will make a change. But yeah, it's a bit hard. He's a really cool them cool. in the design yeah. and trade. But yeah, and he's so good for PVE. You know, he's like the king of the PVE. But then and people, he's everyone. Really I feel like every new player runs through the story with Nestle and does so well, and then naturally they want to try to make it work in PvP and are probably a little disappointed or frustrated. Yeah, but I can feel that. What about the wider future? What are you thinking? So, for the future, um, I'm really, really hyped about the clan thing with the Clip yeah, Wars. Yeah, me too. If 
I, I don't know. It's like, uh, of course, like a little dream, but like there are gyms in, in all the islands and yeah. each club can like try to get it and possess it. And then each member is like, uh, I don't know how they would do that or a double, but that's not so funny. Or yeah. like a day in the week where it's like just GVG, I mean, guild yeah. versus guild. Yeah. and uh fight for it that would be awesome to I'd, be honest i'd love to be like in a dojo with like my cl uh my club members and like we are, are like the npc trainers and dojo leader and they have to like literally walk in with their character and come up to each of us and defeat us to try to take it over or something i, I don't know what they're gonna do with it but I i'm excited yeah me too that could be awesome so that's one thing i'm really hoping that crema in the future will i mean thanks a lot to the community again because they make that li uh, li lively at the moment with the right. tournaments and everything they do but i would really enjoy that crema does himself tournaments in game um mm -hmm. with the cross platform i'm actually everything is like for the future with the cross platform but with the cross platform again i think we will have a huge amount of players coming because there are so many on consoles that aren't just on computers and then they will just buy the game because it's like a pokemon and more competitive I mean, yeah. I enjoy Pokemon. I played all of those. That's, that's not a critic. I just think it's there is no RNG or nearly no. No, there is no energy in, right. RNG in this game. So I enjoy it more. Um, and like, the, I really like how the, what they did with the ranks for the scale up, so that everyone can be in, uh, even the starter players that could have some fun in it maybe. But I think they really need, uh, we need a leaderboard, a real leaderboard, and like more rewards for it. I know there are pensions, but that's actually not enough for the time investment, I think, even if it's more funny than doing free time. But I would enjoy like a top 50 uh, bigger reward that there is like a, really something that's hyping you to try to be first, take yeah. the biggest reward and something like that, a, a I, monthly reward. I think that's going to happen with the seasons. When they get to the seasons, they said that you'll be there'll be leagues within the seasons to advance through and i'm sure there'll be some kind of final season standings that you can battle for i hope anyways but on the roadmap they talk about having seasons and leagues so yeah i just hope it's not 10 bananas you know because you're first yeah, of the right right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um what, what else? you said something else that i can't oh yeah you mentioned like so you, you prefer temtem over the pokemon especially better with the lack of rng i think a lot of temtem players would agree with that so um do you, uh, and, and oh, I was going to mention, you said you want to see some tournaments from Cream. They did say on the roadmap, they do have tournaments listed somewhere, I believe. So we'll see what that looks like. I hope we get them, but I, they, they do. That is something that we can look forward to. We'll see what, um, how they look and how they implement them. Um, just, this will be my last major question. We can just take what time we have from there to go, to go whatever. But just, do you have uh, tips or advice for players trying to get into competitive in, in general for the first time? Or that are doing it and want to improve. I mean, what's what's the advice that you'd like to give if if you had some? So, um, for, it it really depends. Like, if you're a tryhard and don't want to really waste money on temps, you're not sure that will be like really useful in PvP. Uh, it sounds maybe a little bit uh, uh, strange because I'm streamer too. But like, look some streamers that are really mm -hmm. high and competitive. Like um, like yourself, so, you, watch your. It's okay. You can say watch my stream <laughs> if you want to get better. That's a very good answer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I of course um, stream a lot of competitive too. So if you wanna come, like I always answer everything. TVs, question, build teams. Uh, I had people that comes in the stream for that, so I'm pretty happy to help you if you need. But there are other people at different time zones even that's always cool to have more people like Mr. Rishi, uh, Arkham Knight, um, who else is streaming competitive actually? Plus is streaming some competitive too. Mm -hmm. They can answer your questions and it will be quicker to look a streamer and ask in five minutes an answer that would take you like 10 hours of experiencing. Right. Um, so just if you want to have a shortcut, look, look the stream. If you want to do everything by yourself, then I would still suggest hardly to buy Kinu Gyalis. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, like do how you, how you like it and a Valorant. And after yeah. that, you can have fun with whatever you want to play. No, no pick a pick recommendation to complete the Fantastic Four. You think that's not mandatory? 
I think bigger, big at the moment is not mandatory anymore. It's still S tier in my opinion, but it's yeah. just like a meta at the moment where you need a lot of pressure and Piggy Pig brings no pressure at all. He's like the opposite. He's a control tower uh, making to just support everything. But for the damage, it's like... Bleh, bleh. Or you play an aggressive Piggy Pig and that's a whole other question, like Magia. Yeah. I like when that surprises people. and People think the, pig, the pig's just there to turbo and bamboozle and all of a sudden it starts throwing out win attacks and doing serious damage. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it depends on the pig, but you can still compare the damage of a pig a pig, even if his damage builds, to like uh, a Volorant, a Grandpa, or I mean, Grandpa actually is what replaces pig a pig for most of us, I think, because he still has the hypnosis, the turbo, and you have such a big pressure with hyper, so. I think that's why he's like not there that much anymore. Yeah, K Kennedy, last chance. You got one last question you want to get in here before we have to let Tsubaki go in a couple minutes? I have. I do have one last question. <laughs> Tsubaki, you won the tournament. I think you walked away with two million or two point five million. What million. are your plans for all of them, Pan Sons? <laughs> so i have two projects it's like uh i'm still waiting how much will cost the house uh, that's a sure thing sure and, uh, <laughs> the second one is uh, i like to have two examples minimum of each time that i play in competitive so to buy just every new time and kizawa and double uh, and being able to do different spreads and like prepare everything for the competitive after kizawa i mean after the two first weeks of just <laughs> plundering. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That that wasn't a opinion question. There was a right answer. Uh, giving oh. half of it to Kennedy was the right answer. So <laughs> you're going to have to try again next time. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, been great talking to you, having you on, talking to you, like poking your brain and getting some insight. Like, I love this. Definitely need more episodes. Yeah, we'd like love this. to have you back on for sure. I mean, and that's that's. Also, I'm gonna open it up to you, Subaki. Do you have any closing comments or, or final thoughts or opinions you wanna you wanna get in here before we start wrapping up? I mean, first of all, thanks to everyone hearing us. It's like uh, always cool to have you guys. And uh, um, <laughs> I don't think I have something big to add there okay. like just for the new players uh, that are looking and maybe don't even have the game at the moment you should definitely take a try at it it's an awesome game mm -hmm. uh and it's cheaper than it will be later right. so the price is only going to go up well here at the end of the show subaki we uh, always can i can i tackle something that was uh, asked in chat real quick yeah i saw you very quickly because we, we gotta let subaki okay. go here yeah, so Talaki said, may I ask a question? Noxalato has a much higher special attack than normal attack, but gets zero special moves, either from level up, scrolls, or breeding. Do you think there's a reason for this? Uh, the devs did confirm Talaki mm -hmm. that uh, Noxalato's kit is not programmed into the game yet. They have plans to add special attack moves to them, but those moves don't exist yet. So Noxalotl's probably going to get some yeah. weird, cool, scripted they'll, moves. They'll get, they'll get some, he'll, they'll get some special attack moves. That's coming. We just got to wait. I would hold into it too. <laughs> right. <laughs> By the way, uh, Kennedy Talaki is the one looking to get a mushy or mushrook from you. If you guys have to connect. Oh, afterwards. okay. Yeah, I'll make sure and have one bread for a Saturday's <laughs> Tim Talk episode. For now, I got to get a Luma Two I. So Subaki, at the end here, we <laughs> always do some quick closing plugs, and you're the guest today. So why don't you let people know where they can find more of you on stream, uh, online, when and where and how and. Oh, uh, so <laughs> thank you. I'm like. Um, it's working again, so it's a bit harder, but like three days a week, I will be always there at 3.30 um, p.m. EST. Um, so, yeah, I definitely try to stream the most I can, but I don't have big fixed hours because of my job. So I'm sorry for that. But if you want to follow me, it would be my pleasure. So you can see when I'm online. It's Tsubaki Temtem. Um, so thanks a lot for that, guys. Great. And yeah, definitely check out Tsubaki's stream. I love watching your stream. You're so you're so skilled at this game and yet you're so humble and chill and kind that it's really it's one of my favorite streams on, on to, to watch some Temtem content. So I highly recommend it. Kennedy, what about yourself? You can find me on Twitter at Presby Kennedy. Also on the weekend I live stream D D to my YouTube channel. I actually, for the first time, just linked my YouTube channel inside of the uh, chat if anybody wants to catch me there. Um, 
every Saturday night, I am live streaming D&D and a custom homebrewed setting with a meta story that's big, like, uh, it's real big. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to go into that, <laughs> but thanks. Yeah. And check check out Gaijin Boo. He had to leave early, but Gaijin Boo streams pr pretty much daily. Check him out. It's Gaijin Boo. And finally, myself, you can catch the show Tem Talk here on Twitch, um, 11 a.m. on Saturday, CST. We're going to be with Temporium GG hopefully this weekend. Um, I stream Temtem as well throughout the week, uh, twitch.tv slash Vonlin. I put a, a, a link in the in the YouTube for the, the YouTube channel. If you can listen to those shows on YouTube or on any podcast app anywhere. So thank you so much for joining us, Subaki and Kennedy. Um, and thank you all of you guys for coming out. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Until next time. Ooh, that's that's the wrong you. outro music. Here we go. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.